ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد then to continue with al aqida tahawiya the creed compiled by the Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi rahimahullah with the explanation and notes of Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan hafizahullah then last week we had point number 44 concerning Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa huwa al-mab'uthu ila aammatil jinni wa kafatil wara bil haqqi wal huda wa bin nuri wa dhiya and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the one sent to the whole of the jinn and to all of mankind with the truth and the guidance and with light and with radiance. Then with regard to the questions, then we had, and as, as an addition to what occurs here, because picking up on the point that Shaykh al-Fawzan made about the obligation of becoming acquainted with Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with his seerah and his life, then we said it would be nice if we could, if we could learn the lineage of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we had as an extra point the lineage of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back to Adnan. As for the second question, then Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafizullah, he mentioned that it is not sufficient that we just believe with regard to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is Allah's messenger. It's not, su- it's not sufficient for the Muslim that he believes that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a messenger sent by Allah. But rather, we must believe something further to that. What, did the, what point did the Shaykh make? He's a messenger to all mankind and the jinns. No. That in addition, we must believe that he is a messenger, as the brother said, sent to all of mankind and all of the jinn as well. And he mentioned this was in refutation of who? In refutation of different people. Amongst them, who? And what do they say? Uh, not quite this one. I'll show you. Yeah. Who say? Yeah. In refutation of those who say, and amongst them some of the Christians, they say, okay, we agree, okay, they're caught in a tight spot. So they say, instead of believing in the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they say, we'll, we'll agree, we have to agree, that he was indeed a messenger. But we'll say he was a messenger to the Arabs. That's what some of the Orientalists and some of the Christians and the like, they say he was a messenger, okay, we agree with that he was a prophet, but just to the Arabs, not to anyone else. Uh, this was a point in refutation of that saying that it's upon the Muslim to believe he was a messenger sent by Allah and he was a messenger to the whole of mankind and the whole of the jinn. And who can remember an evidence for that? The Shaykh qu- quoted at least three ayahs in that regard. Who can remember at least one of the ayahs mentioning that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is indeed a messenger to all of mankind? I had an ayah from Surah Sabah, an ayah from Surah Al-A'raf, an ayah from Surah Al-Furqan. Naam. Shaykh Al-Fawzan, Hafizullah, he summarized the belief that a Muslim should have with regard to Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in three points. I mean, three on the belief that we should have from what's taken from the dars, what we've had in the dars here with regard to Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he summarized it in three points that we must believe with regard to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who can remember the three points? So the Shaykh summarized it in the three points that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Abdullah wa Rasuluhu. He is a slave of Allah and the messenger of Allah. Secondly, that he was the last of the prophets and messengers. And thirdly, that he was a messenger to all of mankind and all of jinn. 
Then with regard to this week, then the author, rahimahullah, he moves on to a new point, which here is point number 45. وَأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ And that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. And that the speech, and that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. Shaykh al-Fawzan, hafizahullah, said, After you have iman that Allah, the mighty and majestic, or rather, after you have iman in Allah, after you truly believe in Allah, the mighty and majestic, and you have iman, you truly believe in His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Then You have Iman You truly believe That the Quran Is the speech of Allah Because this Is what the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Came with And Allah Sent down the Quran To him So in other words, Shaykh al-Fawzan is pointing out how this point follows on. That the first part of this creed deals with iman in Allah, true faith in Allah. And secondly, we had the mention of iman in the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then naturally following on from that is belief in what he came with. What Allah sent down to him, which is this point here, the Qur'an, which is the speech of Allah. Then Shaykh al-Fawzan said, and this Qur'an is not from the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nor is it from the speech of Jibreel. Rather, it is just kalamullah. It is just the speech of Allah, the mighty and majestic. Allah spoke with it. And Jibreel took it from Allah and the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam took it from Jibreel alayhi salam and the Ummah this nation took it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so that is how the Qur'an has come to us. Jibreel, the, the Allah spoke with it. Allah spoke with the Qur'an. Jibreel took it from Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa took it from Jibreel. And this ummah, this nation, beginning with the companions, they took it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Shaykh al-Fawzan said, So it is the speech of Allah. فَهُوَ كَلَامُ Allah." Minhu bada subhanahu. So it is the speech of Allah. It originated from Him. He, the one free of all imperfections. Then he makes an important point that some people misunderstand. He said, Jibreel did not take it from Allah al Mahfud. Jibreel did not take it, he didn't extract it. From the preserved tablet. As the people of misguidance say. So Sheikh mentioned a refutation here of some people who say. The way it happened is the Quran was written in the preserved tablet. And Jibreel just transcribed it from that preserved tablet. And then he brought it. Sheikh said no. Jibreel did not take it from the preserved tablet. This is what the people of misguidance say. He said, and it is not from the speech of Jibreel and nor Muhammad. إِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنْ كَلَامِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Rather, it is from the speech of the Lord of the whole of creation. And as for Jibreel and Muhammad, عَلَيْهِمَ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ Then those two were messengers who conveyed from Allah the mighty and majestic. They were messengers who conveyed 
from Allah. For speech is said by and is attributed to the one who initially spoke it. Not the one who said it only as one conveying and transmitting it. The Sheikh makes an important point here that with regard to speech, who, who is speech attributed to? The speech is attributed to the person who spoke it. Not to someone who is a messenger who carried it to someone else. It's not called the speech of the messenger. Even though he conveyed it, it's not described as his speech. It's the speech of the one who first spoke with it. And he said, So those who say that Jibreel took it from the Lawh al that Jibreel took it from the preserved tablet, or who say that Allah created it within something, and then Jibreel took it from that thing. And the Shaykh here is indicating two sayings, two deviant sayings with regard to the Qur'an. And in the original text, Ibn Abil Iz, he brings eight different sayings about what? About the Qur'an, eight sayings, one of them being the correct saying of the people of the Sunnah, seven of them being deviant sayings, how people explain what the Qur'an is, how the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. Two of them are what occurs here that Sheikh of Fawzan indicates here. He said, firstly, those people who say that Jibreel took it from the preserved tablet, he didn't hear Allah speak with the Qur'an, he just took it from the preserved tablet himself, wrote it down and took it. Or the second one, or that Allah created it within something else and then Jibreel took it from that thing. Then whoever says this is a kafir, is a disbeliever in Allah, the mighty and majestic, who has disbelieved with kufr, which takes them out of the religion. As is the saying, and he mentions some of the people who say this saying, say this evil and deviant saying. He said, as is the saying of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila, and those who follow their way. Yet again, we see the mention of these two deviant sects with regard to denial of Allah's attributes or the reality of Allah's attributes, the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, mentioning the position of the people of truth, he said, فَهُوَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ حُرُوفُهُ وَمَعَانِيهِ تَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ بِهِ كَيْفَ شَاءَ He said, so it, mean the Qur'an, it is the speech of Allah, its letters and its meanings. Allah spoke with it as he wished. So we describe Allah with the attribute of his having spoken. And al-kalam, speech, is from sifatihi al And speech is from Allah's attributes, which are actions. If you remember the lessons of Aqeed al-Wasatiyah with Shaykh Falah Ismail, Hafizullah, when he made the distinction, as we had it a number of times, the distinction of those attributes of Allah, which are attributes of Allah's self, sifat dhatiyya, attributes of Allah's self. And then we have the attributes of Allah, which are actions of Allah, which is the case here. Allah's speech is from those. Allah's speech is from sifatihi al from Allah's attributes which are actions of His. And as we heard from the Shaykh in those lessons, that with regard to Allah's attributes which are actions, then He does them, it's connected to His Mashi'ah, it's connected to His wish. He does those actions when He wishes, as He wishes. 
So just to again mention what the Sheikh said here. Sheikh Fawzan, he said, وَالْكَلَامُ مِنْ صِفَاتِهِ الْفِعْلِيَّةِ And speech is from Allah's attributes, which are actions. And the kayfiyah, the how, or the manner in which he spoke with it, then in that regard we say, Allah knows best about that. As for how, how Allah spoke then, we don't know. We say, Allah knows best about that. So this is just like the rest of his attributes. We have iman in them. But we do not know how they are. We do not know how they are. We don't know the kayfiyah, how they are. And he said, فَالْمَعَنَا مَعْرُوف وَأَمَّا الْكَيْفِيَّ فَهِيَ مَجْهُولَةٌ لَنَا He said, so the meaning is known. But as for how, then that is unknown to us. In other words, speech, what speech is? Attribute of speech, we know what the attribute of speech is. It's known in the language. But as for how, with regard to Allah, then that's unknown to us. We don't know. Then comes point number 46, and all of these points here, they all follow on now. Obviously, because the importance of the topic of the Qur'an being the speech of Allah, there are a number of points which the author brings in that regard. So the next one, which continues, point number 46. مِنْ هُبَدَى بِلَا كَيْفِيَّةِ قَوْلًا وَأَنْزَلَهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَحْيًا It originated from him as something spoken without us knowing how. And he sent it down to his messenger as revelation. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning that the Qur'an descended from Allah. Allah spoke with it and sent it down. It did not descend from someone else besides him. And it did not originate from someone other than him. And all of these points that the Sheikh is mentioning, same as the points that occur in the text, all of these points are refuting some deviant sect or another. Somebody who says the opposite to this. That's why these points are being stated here. That there are some deviant groups who say the opposite. So the Sheikh is refuting that. He said here, the Qur'an descended from Allah, just to repeat, the Qur'an descended from Allah, he spoke with it and sent it down. It did not descend from someone else besides him, nor did it originate from other than him. Then he said, it is not as they say that it originated from Jibreel or from the preserved tablet or from somewhere in Midair. Rather, it began from Allah and Jibreel heard it and he conveyed it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as wahi as revelation and the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam he conveyed it to the people and if this Quran had been from the speech of humans then someone from the people would have been able to bring a surah the like of it. I mean, if this Quran had been the speech of a human, if it was the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa or someone from the humans, and the Shaykh said, then another human would have been able to bring the like of it. So he like would have been able to bring a surah the like of it. <coughs> then he said, so since they are unable to do this, 
then this shows that it is indeed the speech of Allah, the mighty and majestic. I mean, since no one from mankind can bring another surah like it, then it shows that it is not the speech of anyone from mankind. He said, as evidence for this, he quotes two ayahs. He said, Allah, he said, He the Most High said, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ وَادْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah, ayah 23, with the explanation, And if you are in any doubt about that which we sent down to our slave, I mean to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you're any, in any doubt about it, then bring a surah like it. You bring a surah like it, Allah. You bring a surah like it. And call your witnesses besides Allah upon that. If you are truthful. And he quotes a second ayah in, in, as evidence. He said, And he, the one free of all imperfections and the Most High, said, أَمْ يَقُولُونَ افْتَرَاهُ قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِأَشْرِ سُوَرٍ مِثْلِهِ مُفْتَرَيَاتِ Surah Hud, the 11th Surah, Ayah 13, with the explanation, Or do they say he forged it? Do they say about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he forged this Qur'an? Say, then bring 10 surahs which are forged like it. Shaykh Fawzan said, So Allah rendered them incapable of doing that. Even though they were Arabs and eloquent in the language. And the Quran is in the language of the Arabs and is in the letters which they spoke with. And they were eager to oppose the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean those who opposed him at his time. They were eager to oppose him with whatever they could oppose him with. And if it was within their ability to resist and oppose this Quran, they would not have saved any efforts to do so. So when they were unable to do that, then this shows that it is indeed the speech of Allah, which is not approached by falsehood from in front nor from behind. In other words, the Shaykh is making clear here, and that's where he, the Shaykh al Fawzan ends this explanation of this point, meaning that they were challenged those who oppose the Quran, those who refuse to believe in the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa and in the Quran which he came with, then of course they had to make an answer to it. They, when they say it's not from the speech of Allah, then they of course said it's from the speech of the people. Someone himself said it. Then the challenge was made to them. If that's the case, if he forged it, then one of you who are eloquent in the language, it's your language, you forge a surah like it. Or ten surahs like it. You forge the same then. And they were, they were unable to do so. Even though they, want, they, though they were eager to oppose it and reject it however they could, they were unable to do so. So this proves that that the claim was wrong, it is indeed the speech of Allah. Then with regard to the next point that again continues, point number 47, وَصَدَّقَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ حَقًّا And the believers attest to it as being the truth upon that basis. As was mentioned just before, that's the speech of Allah sent down and so on. Shaykh al Fawzan said, <coughs> in explanation of point number 47, he said, So those who have iman, those who are mu'minun, those who truly believe in Allah and His Messenger, they believe that the Quran is the speech of Allah the mighty and majestic and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was just one who conveyed from Allah 
He's just one who conveyed the message from Allah. He was muballigh, muballigh, one who conveyed it. And then the Shaykh men answers, or he brings a couple of, couple of ayahs which some people may misunderstand and answers this misunderstanding. He said, And as for his saying, or as for the saying of Allah the Mighty and Majestic, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ ذِي قُوَّةٍ عِنْدَ ذِي الْعَرْشِ مَكِينٍ Surah Taqweer, the 81st Surah, Ayahs 19 to 20. With the explanation, Indeed, it is speech, or it is the speech brought by an honorable messenger, in Jibreel alayhi salam, possessing the strength to do, Jibreel possessing the strength to do whatever duty he is given. High in status with the Lord of the Tremendous Throne. And these ayahs, ayahs 19 and 20 from Surah Taqweer, the Shaykh is indicating that someone may misunderstand the first part. Innahu la qawlu rasulin kareem. That is the speech. Someone could misunderstand it being. It's the speech. This Quran is the speech of the Honorable Messenger. It's his speech. Someone may misunderstand it that way. The Shaykh said, so what is meant by its being ascribed to Jibreel is from the aspect of conveying. The Quran is ascribed to Jibreel from the aspect of conveying. He conveyed it. Since it is not possible that this Quran is from the speech of Allah and from the speech of Jibreel. Speech does not come except from one. In one and the same speech comes from one. So it is not possible to describe it as being the speech of more than one. And it's being ascribed to Allah is haqiqiyya. That the Quran being ascribed to Allah as his speech, this is true, this is a true and real ascription. And as for its being ascribed to Jibreel, then from the aspect of conveying it, the aspect of tabligh, of conveying it. So that's the way the Shaykh answers this misunderstanding of the ayah, that this ayah refers to Jibreel as being the one who conveyed the speech of Allah, not the one who initially spoke it. And he mentions another ayah. He said, and in another ayah, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ Surah Al-Haqqah, the 69th surah, ayahs 40 and 41. With the explanation, indeed, it is speech conveyed by an honorable messenger. And it is not the speech of a poet. Little it is that you believe. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This first ayah, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ Here, the, the ayah we had before from Surah Taqweer, the Honorable Messenger was Jibreel alayhi salam. But here in this ayah, from Surah Al-Haqqah, this messenger here mentioned, the Honorable Messenger is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is speech conveyed by an honorable messenger being by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he said, So it's being ascribed to him is an ascription of conveying of tabligh. I mean, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the one who conveyed it. Then he said, Summarizing, he said, So he, the one free of all imperfections, sometimes ascribes it to himself. I mean, sometimes Allah ascribes the Quran, his speech, he ascribes it to himself. And sometimes to Jibreel, and sometimes to Muhammad. Then he said, And one and the same speech cannot have been spoken by more than one. So therefore, it's being ascribed to Allah 
is an ascription with regard to its origin and that it is his speech and then it's being ascribed to Jibreel and Muhammad is idhafatu tabligh an ascription of conveying meaning that with regard to Allah the Quran being ascribed as the speech of Allah then meaning that it is his speech that it originated from him it's his speech in reality and truth and as for being ascribed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Jibreel alayhi sallam then meaning they are the ones who conveyed it it was an ascription of their of conveyance they conveyed it walhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala muhammad there any points of clarification and as we said that ibn abil is in his large explanation he goes obviously into a great detail in this regard and if you want to further see the beauty of the saying of the people of, of truth about the quran being the speech of allah uh, it originated from him, he spoke with it, it's from his speech, its letters and its meanings are from his speech, all this being the saying of the people of truth. If you want to further see the beauty of that speech, then if you look in the explanation here of the, or rather he quoted nine sayings, eight of them being sayings of deviation, if you read the other eight sayings, then you'll further see the beauty of this speech. When they ascribe the speech of Allah to being, being Allah created it in the clouds or Allah created it somewhere else and then Jibreel heard the cloud or heard something else speaking and, and so on to the rest of the deviation that deviant groups have come up with. Then you further see the beauty of the saying of the people of the Sunnah, the people of the truth about the speech of Allah. That he spoke with it in reality. And Jibreel heard it and he conveyed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he conveyed it to the Ummah. With regard to point, point number 46, then a, a quick, again, rough translation. Minhu bada bila kayfiyya qawlan wa anzalahu ala rasulihi wahyan. Then point number 46, we translated as, it originated from him. It originated from Allah. Qawlan, as something spoken. Bila kayfiyya. Without us knowing how. And he sent it down to his messenger as revelation. Obviously the first part as we heard in the explanation. That it originated from, from him, from Allah. I mean, it didn't originate from, from the clouds or from mid-air or from the preserved tablet, or so on, and so on to the sayings of deviation. It originated from Allah. Bila kayfiyya, without how. I mean, without us knowing how. We don't know, I mean, we don't know how. As we regard to the rest of Allah's attributes, the same principle, that we don't know the how. As for us, then we don't know the how. Yeah, what Sheikh Fawzan was saying was this saying, and it's a saying of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila, this saying is a saying which takes a person outside the fold of Islam. Obviously, the, the, the Sheikh is making clear that this saying being saying unbelief, as for picking out individuals now, finding people who say that saying and then put, putting a ruling upon them, that's not upon not for us to be, to, as individuals, to, to do. But as for the saying, then, as the Sheikh said, wait a Whoever says, with regard to the speech of Allah, that Jibreel took it from the preserved tablet. I mean, Allah didn't really speak with it. In other words, the saying of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila, it's not a case that Allah spoke with it and Jibreel heard. They deny that. They deny that the speech, his speech, which Allah spoke with, and that Allah speaks with a, vo- with a voice which is heard, they deny all of that. And as for the Qur'an being letters, then they deny the like of that. So they say in the end, instead, they say, no, instead of all that, they deny all of that. Instead, they say, Jibreel just took it, he, he, he read it in Lawh al-Mahfuz, transcribed it, wrote it down from that, then took it down himself. He 
It's just something written in, in the preserved tablet. He took it, took it down. Whoever says that, or whoever says that Allah created it in something else, and Jibreel took it from that thing, then, and likewise, the, the same deviant, the same deviants, the Jahmiyyah, and the like, they say the same with regard to Musa, alayhi salam. They say that he didn't hear the speech of Allah. That Musa, the Kaleem of Allah, the one whom Allah spoke to, they say, what did Musa hear? They deny that Allah, he heard Allah's speech. They say, rather, he heard a sound which Allah created, and then they deny, they, they differ about what, where was the sound created, what was it created in. In other words, Musa, alayhi salam, they say he heard something created. And the people of the truth, they respond to this, of course, with many evidences amongst them, that what was said was, an Allah. The speech I heard was, I am Allah. So what created thing can, can be saying to a prophet, I am Allah. Because this is, a, this is an evil saying. So uh, Sheikh Fawzan was saying, so whoever says that Jibreel just took it from the preserved tablet, or that Allah created it in something, and then Jibreel took it from that thing, then this one is a disbeliever in Allah, the mighty and majestic, with disbelief which takes them out of the fold of Islam. As is the saying of the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila, and whoever follows their way. We are, I mean, it's not just a saying, that's a, it's, a, it's an evil saying, it's a, bit, it's a bit deviant saying, it's kufr, that saying is kufr. Then with regard to point number 45, can I repeat point number 45? Then point number 45, the first point was وَأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ And that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. What the, as for the, the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila and the like, the ones who say that Jibreel just took it from the preserved tablet, then as we said, that why they say that, it's not just a technical point that they say, how did, actually, how did Jibreel actually, actually take it? He took it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but how did he technically get it? Mm-hmm. It's not just a technical point. It's based upon their denial, their ta'atil. It's based upon their denying the speech of Allah, denying the attribute of Allah, of speech, of true and real speech. And they, they'll say, some of them say, as for speech of Allah, we affirm it, that's something metaphorical. That's something majaz, something metaphorical. We say Allah speaks, but in reality He doesn't speak. It's just it's something, you know, then they differ about what is the meaning of speech then. They say, as for speech which is spoken, which is comprised of letters and meanings, speech which is heard, and they deny all of that for Allah. They say, no, Allah does not speak in that, in that sense. Rather, He creates it, He creates it in something else, and then it's heard from that thing. Or it's a meaning which exists with Allah, and when it's expressed, and all the rest, of the rest of it, I don't want to go into the deviant sayings really without any dire need but they have all these mad, mad crazy sayings that, which in, in reality is just based upon their ta'atil that they deny Allah's attributes and amongst them and amongst the most important attributes which they deny is Allah's speech they say they were, in reality they're saying that Allah doesn't speak they say he has, he has, we affirm speech for him but with a metaphorical meaning as for true real speech that, that he speaks he speaks with a voice, with letters, which is heard, and so they deny all of that. So therefore they've got to try and say, basically, how did Jibril get it? How did, how did Jibril get the speech of Allah? How did it come to him? And they say, well, he must have got it from the, uh, from the preserved tablet and written it down. Because they say he can't have heard it. Because they don't, they don't affirm speech, which is... Allah must have they don't affirm speech which is heard that Jibril heard speech from Allah they don't affirm that at all and if you read as I said whoever wants to go back to the original Sharh and read the rest of those eight deviant sayings then you know absolute craziness and as, as soon as these, these groups they don't stop and just think about their own sayings and how deviant they are and, what, and how, how nonsensical and deviant they are and therefore retract from them 
they hold the sayings. Obviously, took, they take them from the earlier, from the, the Jahmiya, from the one, from the other, from before. They take the sayings, and then they try and defend them further. And when they clash with with with, with that which is confirmed from the book and the Sunnah, then they start denying that which is confirmed from the book and the Sunnah. They don't take any step back. They just start denying what's affirmed in the book and the Sunnah. This uh, saying here, where these questions come from? Yeah, is it permissible, Hali Jews and Naqul, oh my God, Yani, Ya Ilahi, Yani, Ishay, Jazakum al Khairan wa Iyakum. Look at the English here. Hey, but. As, it, as for, oh my God, you know, if a person is intending by that, it just it comes out, is, you know, something, usually when a person, something happens, or something, something terrible happens or something, then a person says, uh, oh my God, same as in Arabic, ya ilahi, he's, he's a calling upon Allah, and I don't know anything wrong in the English, la- the questions with regard to English language, I don't know anything wrong, in, you know, if that's his intention, he's calling upon Allah, or what he has in his mind is Allah in that regard, that Allah is, is ilah. Allah is the one to be to be turned to in times of distress and times of disaster. And, and but I was just making the point that the origin in origin obviously our deen is in is in the Arabic language and what's upon us is to be upon the Arabic language to the best of our ability. And in the like of this, in the like of these situations, a person should call upon his Lord in, in the Arabic language. And any sort of phrases, any du'as, or any phrases, which a person, if a person is weak in the Arabic language or he speaks in, his, in English, then any sort of phrase where the meaning is, is a bit doubtful or the meaning, it could, could have a bad meaning, then he should, he should straighten that out or leave it. And everything should be referred back to the Arabic language. And he should leave that which is got, you know... It could have a bad meaning in it or a doubtful meaning or the like. Wallahu a'lam. Wallahu a'lam. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika shahadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruk wa atubu ilaik. Jazakallahu khairan.